There's a mad darkness eating at the soul of man. Are you hungry for horror? Leave the children at home, and if you're squeamish, stay home with them. <laughs> Vincent Price. Ian Ogilvy. Good day, sir. Are you the witch finder that men speak of? And introducing Hilary Dwyer <laughs> as Sarah. Oh, Richard. In the most frightening motion picture ever made. He'll hang you. He'll burn you. He'll mutilate you. American Independent Pictures and Tygon Films present The Witch Finder General in big letters across here above some burning witches showing plenty of cleavage. Hmm. It, it's an eye-catching pest, Tony. And it will look gorgeous up on a billboard on the haymarket. But what will they think of the film? The press? They'll love it. Lust, brutality, gore, sex, murder, a touch of blasphemy. And sequences of astonishing and appalling ferocity. The film is an exercise in sadistic extravagance with lashings of blood and beatings. It is an unpleasant picture. Extremely noisy. No holds barred. A downbeat yarn. Peculiarly nauseating. No stomach churning detail is spared. For anyone with the slightest squeamishness or the first stirring of moral indignation, I cannot think that the picture will do anything but sicken and outrage. Verdict? No place for a laugh. The reviews were mixed. Most hated it. Some really hated it. But what the critics didn't know about our film was that something very, very special happened while we were making it. Something rare and curious. Something sort of... Miraculous. The movie's plot was straightforward enough. Set during the English Civil War, this British horror feature follows the witchfinder, Matthew Hopkins, as he seeks out those suspected of witchcraft. He goes about hanging or burning them with ill-disguised relish. Alan Bennett wrote about it in his weekly column. It is the most persistently sadistic and morally rotten film I have seen. A degrading experience. It made me feel dirty. It was 1968. The film pulled no punches. For my money, it reveals more intelligence and talent than all our swinging cows, privileges and mulberry bushes put together. Even if it does belong to the despised horror mould. The young director's object seems to be to shock his audience into a recognition that violence breeds violence. And especially violence born of religious fanaticism. My name is Tony Tenser. Up until 68, I've been in Soho producing some of the most successful titles in the exploitation market. My best work included a nudist documentary, Naked as Nature Intended, a Sin in the Shadows flick called London in the Raw, and some nice little horror pictures too. The young director in question was Michael Reeves, and when Mike brought the Witchfinder project to me, I liked it straight away. It had potential. Matthew Hopkins is an interesting villain, uh, driven and dark. The story has an authentic historical backdrop with a setting that, that's unusual for this genre. Yeah, you don't get much East Anglia on the big screen, Mike. So, there'll be lots of thrills and terror, plenty of gore and flesh. Yes, Tony. It could be very immediate. Mike was clever posh and knew what he wanted as a kid he'd helped edit nudie flicks in soho he understood the game and he was big screen nuts by the time he was 21 he directed his first proper movie it was called the revenge of the blood beast a demonic low-budget horror shot in italy starring barbara Steele and ian ogilvy <laughs> messy but show promise i know a good prospect when i see it so i produced mike's second film the sorcerers featuring boris karloff and ian ogilvy <laughs> disturbing little film loads of blood pretty girls and cliff richard on the soundtrack the Witchfinder General was going to be different. 
Mike Reeves was growing as a director. My confidence was high. It was a sexy time. Mike was just 23 years old, and we were going to make a big film. But as we entered pre-production, we didn't know it. But Mike had less than two years left to live. The Americans are in for 30 grand. Don't let a large sum like that put you in awe, Mike. It won't. What do they want for their money? We can keep Witchfinder General as our title, but, but they want their own for over there. What do they want to call it? The Conqueror Worm. Hmm. A reference to the Edgar Allan Poe poem, cashing in on the Roger Corman series. It has merit. I love all that gothic gumph, don't they? The Yanks? Yes, Tony. They do. But it wasn't only the name the Americans wanted to say over. They wanted to cast the title role. I want Pleasance. This film has been conceived for him. Donald Pleasance is the Witchfinder. Yeah. Vincent Price is a good actor, though, isn't he? No. He comes with the money. I don't want Vincent Price. I want Donald Pleasance. Relax, Mike. Take it easy. I am relaxed. Mm -hmm. I'm not making a carry-on film, Tony, or a hammer horror. I think he's a lovely man, a lovely performer. He's a legend. He's camp. He's got terrific screen presence. He is a parody of himself. That voice could chill an inferno. We, we've got to believe that the witch finder is a menacing sadist. Otto Preminger, Roger Corman, Alfred Hitchcock, none of those fellas are Mugs Mike, and Vinny has worked with a lot of them. He's Hollywood royalty. He's a has-been. Two nice teas, please, Angelica. I want realism. Real is scary. Donald is a realistic actor. Vincent Price is artifice. Self-conscious, bog-eyed crumminess. You can get a performance out of him. I've got every confidence in you. He is a lanky, rubber-faced showboater. I feel very strongly about this, Tony. I know. But if we don't use Price, we can't make the film. And he wants to do it? I've told Vinny all about you. You've spoken to him? He said you sounded marvellous. Mm. Well, twiddling his pencil moustache, no doubt. Oh, come on, Mike. Chin up. Sod the tea. Angelica, two brandies. Mike knew when he needed to compromise. A bright lad. Vincent Price was still a big name. Sure. He'd been sidelined into B-movies for a few years. Sure, he was past his prime. Sure, his acting style was mannered and he had a reputation for frippery, campery and fakery. And maybe he was a bit of a joke. But to me, well, I grew up with his films. That voice, that face. Finney was an icon and I loved him. He was a proper movie actor, a star, old school. A man like that in our little film... We were going to be working with an acting legend, a bony fide movie colossus. Vincent Price was coming to England. What a treat. London Heathrow Airport, welcome flight 59B. Oh, it can't be. Is that, um, him? It's him. It's no, scary bloke. No, it can't be. Well, hello. Either I'm Vinnie Price or I'm doing a marvelous impersonation of myself. <laughs> How are you doing, folks? Oh, <laughs> Mr. Price. Ah, you must be young Mike. Great to meet you. No, uh, sorry. I'm Philip Wadilove, associate producer. Welcome to England, Mr. Price. Ah, is Michael Reeves here? Uh, Mike is tied up with the script. Uh, he sends his apologies. Of course, dear boy. Now, take me to your goddamn young genius. <laughs> He's flown all this way, and you ignore him. He's not used to being treated like that. Perhaps he should get used to it, then. You've got to meet your star before the shoot, Mike. I've got lots to do. Come on, you've got a terrific cast. Lovely Ian Ogilvy, lovely Hilary Dwyer, lovely Rupert Davis, and... Wilfred Bramble. Mm. For one scene. We're all here serving your creativity, Mike. Be nice. Just say hello to him. I arranged for us all to meet up at a London hotel. Break the ice. Get the chemistry flowing before the shoot. 
Michael is a little late, Tony. He'll be here. He's dying to meet you, Vinny. He's a huge fan of yours. And I've been hearing fine things about him as an artist. Don Siegel reckons he's going places. Mike's a terrific talent. Well, Donnie Siegel knows his eggs, and Michael is so young. I look forward to making his acquaintance when he arrives. How are you finding London? Oh, I love England, Tony. I studied art in London as a lad. Halcyon days. I have fond memories of the royal parks, the, the green of the trees, those marvelous English skies. I once met a cockney, you know. A fine little fellow. There are skies in Norfolk, Vinnie, and what a landscape. Flatter than Twiggy's chest. You can see for miles. <laughs> well, I expect Mike will tell me all about it. If he arrives. We're filming in the village of Lavenham. Hasn't changed since the 1500s. Michael is keen to capture that age-old creepiness. Age-old creepiness is my speciality, Tony. We're thrilled you're here. They're going to treat you like a minor god on set. Only a minor one. <laughs> <laughs> you think Mike had an accident? Yeah, probably caught in traffic. Well, Tony... You've whetted my appetite for a delightful sojourn in the English countryside in the company of young Michael. And, and working on the film, too, naturally. Ah, at last, here we are. <laughs> Afternoon, Tony. Hello, young Philip. Vinny, may I introduce Mike Reeves? You saw me. Michael Reeves, at last. It would be a cliché to say that I've heard many great things about you, but true nonetheless. And I hadn't expected you to be so pretty, too. Delighted to meet you, sir. Hello. Hello. Indeed. Well... Our main job of work begins tomorrow, and I, I can't tell you how invigorating I found the script. From my reading of history, I recognize in my character, Matthew Hopkins, the witch finder... I have to go. I'm rather busy. Something I said? No, no. It's just his way. A curious young man. Up to his eyeballs in the screenplay. Of course, of course. His mind is on the shoot. Where else would it be? The production unit, cast and crew, descended on Norfolk. It was September. It's lovely down there at that time of year. Fresh air, autumn sunshine. I put Vinnie up in a classy little hotel. I wanted him comfortable, pampered. He loved it. It wasn't long before he and Michael met again on set. Yeah, fantastic. Can we three? Where's the stunt woman? Uh, she prefers to be called an action actress. Ah, uh, fine. Uh, can we find the action actress, strap her to a pole, and then lower her into the bonfire? Please. Mm -hmm. yeah, she's uh, just being fed with a spear suit. Hey, that dog keeps trying to piddle on the peasant children. Can someone get rid of it, please? Uh, more blood on the screaming victims and more screaming. I put them in the pen and get the extras to poke them with sticks. Have we got pointed sticks? Well, how much blood, Mike? Five hundred percent more. Oozing, please. Glistening. Should we shoot back? background and reactions while we're waiting. Uh, yes, Philip, let's do that. Where's uh -huh. Vincent Price? Uh, Mr. Price, uh, call for Mr. Price. Uh, can we, can we build Price. that fire up? It's too polite for a witch burning. Up, here he comes. Is someone calling for Vinny? <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Mr. Price. Morning, Morning Mr. Price. Morning, Vinny. Morning. Hello, <laughs> Philip, my dear boy. <laughs> Hello, everyone. One and all. Here we are, then. What a fine morning it is. The air is like wine. My costume fits like a frilly glove. And we have a marvelous day of work ahead. Let's have some fun, everyone. How are you doing, Mike? Where, pray, do you want me, good sir? Stand at the back, Vincent. Excuse me? Stand at the back, Vincent. Vinny, please. At the back, you say? Back there. You want to put the merchandise at the back of the store? Am I hearing you correctly? Back over here? Yes, please, Vincent. Vinny, over here? Further. Right back here? Keep going. Any further and I'll be back in Missouri. Uh, extras around, Vincent, please. No one speaking peasants around, Mr. Price, please. Gather around, my friends. Where's that stunt woman? And what am I doing here, Mike? Uh, it's in the script. You're watching the witch burn, Vinny. I see. Reacting. Well, 
I should think I would be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, background artist, stoic fascination, please. Creepy all. Okay. Uh, creepy all, please, peasants. One sweep of crowd watching the burning ending on the witch finder. A witch finder reacts to burning. Take one. Camera. Speak. And action. Sweep across slower, a little slower. And onto the witch finder for his reaction. What's he doing? Uh, stop, please. Cut and reset. We're going again. Okay, nice Vincent! Vincent! Vinny! I have notes. What are you doing? Acting, my dear fellow. Stop rolling your eyes around. My eyes? Stop swiveling them about. You're watching a woman burn to death, not admiring Rod Laver at Wimbledon. Note taken. And again. Which when reacts to burning, take two. Camera. Speed. And action. And sweep across. And finish on. Cut it, please. Cut and reset. We're going again. Vincent! Michael! Your eyes! I wasn't swiveling them, my dear. You were squinting them. I was narrowing them. We're avoiding stereotypes. But not archetypes, surely. Evil doesn't squint. Just watch her burn. Real emotion, please. Real emotion. Are we torching this broad for real? Just feel it, please, Vincent. What does he think I'm doing here, huh? What does the witch finder feel, Michael? You're the actor. Note taker. Again, please. The witch finder reacts to burning. Take three. Camera. Speed. And action. And... Sweep Stop, please. And cut and reset. We're going again. Vincent! Yes, master. Your head. My head? You moved it. It is portable. You, you wobbled it. I can assure you. Don't I... wobble it. In keeping with real feeling. No. Don't move your head. There is a certain amount of involuntary... Keep it still. Please. And what about my hand? Might I make a gesture? Shake my fist at the witch as she burns, perhaps, huh? Or, um, hold a handkerchief to my forehead, overcome with the spectacle, haunted, perhaps, by an inner turmoil. Maybe it's even guilt. No hands, no fists, no guilt. Watch. Feel it. Don't move. If I don't move, how will anyone know how I'm feeling? The camera will know. Doubtful, young man. The camera will know, Vincent. Do less. Are you telling me how to behave on camera, young Michael? I am telling you how to behave on this camera. I've made 75 films. How many have you made? Two. Good ones. Ah. <laughs> okay, Fritz Lang. Tell me what you want. I've got big enough shoulders here. I can take it. I can tell you what I don't want. I, I don't want your face to fidget. I want no... Eye rolling, no lazy mannerisms, no grand gestures, no affectations, no stock movements, no false flutters, no mechanical contortions. I, I don't want you to overact at all. I don't want to see Vincent Price through this viewfinder. I want Matthew Hopkins and no one else. I want the real witch finder and I will scratch him into this celluloid if I have to. But this picture is about evil and witches and, and fantasy. No, 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 it, it's not. It's about extraordinary times and dreadful events, all of it real. And this film will have the spit and stench of that time. This story is about the real violence and darkness in all men. 
because it is in all of us, Vincent. I want to see the darkness in you. I was led to believe that this would be a genre picture. I think, perhaps, it is you who is being a little unrealistic. That's why I wanted Donald Pleasance for the role. Pardon me? You heard me. Positions, please. We're going again. Does this goddamn four-year-old anti-social limey screwball know who he's talking to? Get me off of this picture! Benny. You're the agent, do something! Calm down! I got thrice the pedigree of Pleasance. Pleasant isn't a leading man. Donnie Pleasance isn't an East Age. Hell, he isn't even a Class A movie star. Get me on the next flight out of here and wire my lawyers! <laughs> Pros don't walk off movies. Vinny would never walk off a movie. But he was in a state having a tantrum. I shot down there to build some bridges. It calmed down by the time I arrived. Two nice brandies. Oh, cheers. <sighs> Tony, um, you don't speak to people the way he spoke to me. Must have been difficult. Was I second choice? Did you want Donny Pleasance? I mean, I want Donny P when I've got Vinny P. You're the top man. And Mike knows that too, whatever he says. We both know that's not true, Tony. It's been a long time since I had a hit. I don't make great pictures anymore. I lost confidence some time ago. Chin up, Vinny, chin up. Michael wouldn't have meant anything personal by what he said. He said I had a wobbling head. That's personal. It's obvious what's happened. Is it? You're a massive star. Mike's intimidated. Doubtful. Believe me. Do you think? Absolutely. A man of your experience and status on his set, it's intimidating for him. Well, I do try to put people at their ease. You cast a big shadow. The last thing I want is for anyone to feel uncomfortable. Mike is brilliant, but he's also awkward. He went to public school. Oh. He's English. I, I don't know what to think. Vincent Price takes this in his stride. A little bit of creative tension never did anyone any harm. I do strive for harmony, Tony. I'll talk to him. Make things all nice. Ah, well, maybe we can start over. Well, of course we can. We'll chuckle about this, come on. Give us a little smile, Vin. <laughs> Two more brandies, eh? <laughs> <laughs> You're a naughty fellow, Tony. But I do like you. Two nice brands. What is it you want, Tony? I've got rather a lot on. It's about Vinny. Still in a mood, is he? Not so much, now I've had a word. Then what's to talk about? He's not happy. Neither is Matthew Hopkins. We're talking about the actor, not the character. What's the difference? Don't get all Jean-Paul Sartre on me, Mike. I'm not an intellectual. Vinny needs treating with kid gloves. He's American. What do you want me to say? Reassure me. Everything is going to be all right, Tony. Reassure me convincingly. <sighs> I'll try harder with him. You geniuses are a handful. Why so cantankerous? I'm trying to work out how I can shoot the Battle of Naseby with just two extras and a tent. And? I'm going to have some soldiers talking about it and... Leave it at that. See, that's what I like about you, Mike. One way or another, you get things done. And one way or another, I've got to convince an audience that Camp Uncle Vincent is the pernicious witch finder. Well, sometimes there was an intensity to Mike, like he felt life was letting him down. Made me want to give him a clip round the ear. Or a cuddle. But that's maybe why he made horror films. To get that stuff out of his system. Hmm. I haven't seen Michael this morning. He's in a meeting with the D.O.P. I thought he'd be keen to speak after our last encounter. But once again, Vinny gets the cold shoulder. I'm sure that's not the case. <laughs> a modest man doesn't ask much from life, Philip. A little civility, perhaps? An occasional gesture, maybe, of, of goodwill. A simple man asks for very little. The logistics for the shot he's planning are complex. And... My dear boy, are we actors mere logistics too, huh? 
Or are we human? Huh? Oh, is, is this my mount? Hand-picked for you by the wrangler. Oh, a lively man. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I've not had one of these between my legs for some time now. <laughs> you want to take her for a trot? Release the rain, Philip. Let's see what she can do. Oh, the things I do for art. <laughs> ah, hey, steady girl. Vinny, uh, what the hell is in this horse? You need to... <laughs> oh, Vinny, oh, Mr. Oh. Price. Get the nurse, please. Oh. The nurse. Are you nurse. okay? Oh. Oh. Where does it hurt? My lower back. Where's that nurse? There are... They're getting her from the pub. Oh, is this where it ends, Philip? A muddy puddle in Norfolk with a broken coccyx. Oh, oh. make sure the young genius hears about this, will you? No. Oh. Oh. He is in a lot of pain. Oh, and how is he expressing it? By shaking his fist at God, rolling his eyes and waggling his tongue. He's in bed at the hotel and threatening to stay there for the rest of the shoot. Great. Do you want to see him? No. But you'll need to see a doctor for insurance purposes. It's Philip. Vinny? I'm a bed. Uh, Mike wants you to see a doctor. Is Mike with you? Uh, no. Forget it. I ain't seeing no goddamn English quack. Coxix. Uh, sounds nasty. What did the doctor say? Vinny won't see a doctor. We need to see a doctor, so we're covered for insurance. That's what Mike said. Has Mike seen him? No. Tell Mike to see him, for God's sake. That's what Vinny wants. Vincent is not dying, Philip. He's just got a bruised arse. Can't you... No! That you, Michael? It's Philip. I'm not leaving this bed until... I feel better. And what's Mike Reeves doing about Vinny's coccyx? We're all trying to cope, sir. We don't like this, Tony. The studio cannot have an unhappy star. You know what I'm saying? Take a bunch of grapes and tell him you're sorry it happens. I'm not wasting time, Tony. The Yanks are getting twitchy. They're messing with my savoir faire. He's doing this to get at me. There's a lot at stake here. For all of us, do the right thing. <sighs> Vinny? Philip? Mike's here. We're all worried about you, Vincent. Say that again. I didn't quite catch it. I'm worried about you, Vincent. Who's that? It's Mike. Michael? Surely you're too busy to visit little old me. How are you? How's your... Coccyx? I landed on my coccyx. How's your coccyx? I don't like to make a fuss. It would put minds at rest if you'd... Speak up, Mike. You're not projecting quite well enough to pierce my door. We'd like you to see a doctor, Vincent. Call me Vinny. Vinny. A doctor won't be necessary. I have minor bruising. I'll soldier on. Uh, can we at least take a look at the afflicted area? Is that your request, Mike? Better if it's looked at. Well, the door isn't locked. Philip will take things from here. Of course, maestro. You shouldn't have taken time out of your schedule for such a minor incident. But thanks for dropping by. <laughs> when I went in there, he was sitting up in bed, wearing a nightcap and gown, reading Dickens by candlelight. And did you look at it? Mm. He got on all fours. <laughs> I lifted his nightshirt, I touched the bruised area, and I asked him how it felt. What did he say? He said, that feels wonderful, dear boy. <laughs> He's an old sod, isn't he? Mm. Sometimes I hate him so much I love him. <laughs> He's a fragile creature, your actor. Vinny was delicate, God bless him. He needed to know that he was valued. Mike's visit gave him a lift. He was further boosted when he started to meet the other actors. 
I suppose it's pointless asking you to actually direct me, Mike. You know how to act, Ogilvy. <laughs> Ian Ogilvy was cast as the heroic, romantic good guy Richard Marshall. Ian is a gorgeous actor, exactly the right kind of stud muffin we needed, upright and precise. He was also old pals with Mike, so he knew what to expect on a Michael Reeves production. Canter along the ridge until you cross paths with the witch finder. We'll reset for dialogue when you're there. So, V. Vincent Price is up there, is he? <laughs> Sitting by a ditch. What's he like? Exactly what you'd expect. And action! Good day, sir. Are you the witch finder that men speak of? Oh, my God. She's so pretty and she rides that freaking horse so well. I hate her. May I shake the hand of the master of the macabre? Uh, don't push it, Alice. <laughs> I'm Ian. I know. Vinny. How are you? Hungry. Nearly time for lunch. Will you join me? You bet, baby. Vinny felt at home among his own. On considering how things were between Ian and Michael, the company of Ian Ogilvy and other actors was good for him. Hillary! Uh, Have you met Hillary Dwyer, Vinny? Oh, I don't believe I've had that pleasure. Hello. <sighs> Hillary's playing Sarah. Of course. The beautiful English Rose. Join us. Uh, please do. Thanks. <sighs> now, have I seen you in movies, Hillary? <laughs> I'm rather new. This is Hillary's debut as a romantic lead. How exciting. I'm rather nervous, actually. Whatever for? I'm in esteemed company. We're all in this together, my dear. Workers at the coal face, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but you're just... So famous, Vincent. <laughs> Being famous just means folks notice when you mess up. <laughs> Have you seen any of the rushes? They scream them at the cinema in the village. I never attend dailies. Why not? I can't watch myself. I'm not looking forward to watching myself after we shoot that scene. That scene? The bedroom moment. Ah. You must have been in a thousand, Vinny. I don't know what you're insinuating, young lady, but do carry on. <laughs> Mike says it's going to be subtle. I hope he means it. And how are you finding Mike? Seems like a nice guy. You know him, Ian? Since we were kids. He lives and breathes Phil. But not much experience of life, maybe. The crew love Mike. Doesn't that mean he's probably okay? Vinny was rallying, but he was soon back on set with Mike. Where's the action actress? We need to hang her. Ah, uh, having a neck brace fitted. Oh. Some will give the priest a Bible. He can't give the last rites on the door of the L.C.S. Hey, that bloody dog keeps picking on the prop. Shoot! Go, 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 go. We drag her up the hill to the gallows. Where is she? And where is Vincent? Hi, everyone. Another day, another dollar. Where do you want me, Mike? At the side. I shall see to it immediately, sire. Hopkins commands the events of the scene, does he not? You're in the background. Again? When she's hanging, I'll crash zoom onto you for a reaction. A close-up? Yes. <sighs> you know it. Are we ready? Action actress in position. Hanging and crash zoom. Take one. Camera. Speed. And action. She struggles up the hill to the gallows. The witch finder's henchmen force her into the noose, and then... Oh, hold, hold on that, hold, 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 and... Crash zoom onto Vincent. Crash zoom! Oh, please. Reset it. Cut and reset, we're going again. Vincent! I reacted realistically. Your, your head, your eyes, your cheeks, even your ears were overacting. You are supposed to be a sadist. I'm not the sadist here. Well, you should be. I was feeling it. You were not! I lived it. You magnified it. I want subtle, sly enjoyment. Stop hamming it up! What did you say? We're going to try again. 
Starting positions, please. Then sitting little adolescent. You want sadistic darkness, Reeves. You won't like it. I'll show you my bloody fury, you you jumped up English public schoolboy. Hate my acting as much as you goddamn like. I'll give you something to hate. Let's go then. Hanging in crash zoom. Take two. Camera. And action. Yeah, yeah. Drag her up that hill, boys. Got to make it real. How dare he call me a ham in front of people. I've got Shakespeare in these veins. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Michael's feet. Skinny limbed English son of a bitch. And the crash zoom onto Vincent. That's the one. And cut and print. Thank you, everyone. Moving on. Moving on? We're printing it. You like that? That was real. Next setup. You gotta be kidding. Poor old sod couldn't do right for wrong. Or wrong for right. Vinny! Can I give you a lift anywhere? Going anywhere near California? Bad day. Yeah. I think maybe I forgot what acting is. I... I actually fear this picture will be my worst. Perhaps even the worst picture ever made. Some of us are going to a pub tonight. Why don't you join us? Oh, I don't know. I've not been feeling myself. English beer will cure that. Well, I... I could throw on a sweater and some denim slacks and drag myself along. We'll have some fun. No. <laughs> Don't lead me astray, Mr. Ogilvy. <laughs> I know full well how you naughty romantic leads like to take advantage of the ingenue. Was Mike with Karloff like he is with me? He had Boris on his knees, covered in blood for hours on end, and <laughs> Boris was an old man. Well, I'm in my late forties myself. No, <laughs> surely. <laughs> That's in Hollywood years. Boris didn't mind? He loved it. <sighs> Mike doesn't like me. I, I, I can't make this director happy. I might as well stop trying. Disengage and maybe get through this thing without a heart attack. What are you having? Let me see. Warm ales. Ah, ye old badger, a pint of fire and brimstone, or a yard of the bishop's finger. You choose for me, Ian. I'm admiring your jewellery, Vinny. Beautiful colour. Turquoise. The exquisite workmanship is by Native Americans. It's very stylish. But then you always look so dapper. You're a doll, Hilary Dwyer. You remind me of my daughter. She's a beautiful girl. Ian mentions that you've been feeling a little low. Oh, I'm okay. You do know that we all love you, don't you, Vinny? The cast and crew. Thank you for saying that. You big softy. <laughs> Got me in one, Dwyer. That's exactly what I am. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Price. Yes, my friend? May I have an autograph? An autograph? The locals are thawing. Now, what's the name, miss? Melody. Sweet Melody. From your pal, Vinnie Price. Uh, and, and do you like my films, Melody? Oh, very much. Tell these folks you're not a stooge. I get to follow me around. Oh, so we haven't met. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see your new film. Between you and I, Melody, the people are very nice. <laughs> but I'm not expecting too much of this picture. Bye-bye now. Thank you, Mr. Price. Hey, Vinny, the crew want you to tell them a story. That one about Diary of a Madman had to be stitches. Well, they seem to enjoy the ones where I'm wearing tights. Here's your pint. I hope it's the bishop's finger, Ian. I'm feeling reckless. So, Vinny was dealing with his problems best he could. Meanwhile, Mike had his own struggles. 
Working in the exploitation movie field puts pressures on a director, especially when shooting the scenes with the girls. A good Tony Tenser Tigon film needs good girls. And when I say good, I mean bad. It's what's required for the German market, Mike. I can't do it to Hillary. Hillary knew what she was signing up for. We have a, a very violent film. Do we really、It's、need to? It's the nature of the beast, Mike. Nature of the beast. I have to take my top off. It'll be a closed set. Is it important for the plot? These characters, Sarah and Richard, love each other. We need to see it expressed at this point. It'll be natural,、uh, pure, lyrical, and a little bit gratuitous. Later, when Sarah is corrupted by the Witchfinder and his henchmen, the、uh, the audience will think back to this scene, and and the contrast will make her corruption feel more acute. That's a neat explanation, Mike. Not buying it. Can't we make it more suggestive, less explicit? We can't be too artful for this market. What will actually be seen? I'll I'll use a heavy blue filter to cover as much as possible. We're all making compromises. I'll do my best for you. Okay, Mike, I get it. I went into this with my eyes open. Thank you. Both. I've seen it, and it's a nice scene, Mike. Very artistic, very classy, but maybe too artistic and too classy. We've moved on. But you haven't shot the tavern scene yet, have you? I know my job. I had to intervene. We needed more girls. We needed to see more of the girls. The tavern scene was a great excuse for a bit of leg and boob. Wenches galore. My background in naturist films meant I was thinking ahead of the game.、Uh, hi, Tony.、Uh, Let me introduce you to the ladies, Philip. This is Brandy, Misty, Pinky, and Dolly. Say hello, Dolly. <laughs> Does Mike know you, Tony? Michael. Extras for the tavern scene. Can I speak to you? Sure. Where are they from? A solo club owned by an associate of mine. Lovely birds, and I know exactly what's required. Fit the girls out with wench costumes for the.、Oh、I'll、uh, show them to wardrobe. And when we wrap, we'll have a nice little party back at the hotel. They're not even actors. I thought you liked realism. Here we go. Ready, Mike? Ah,、uh, non-speaking tavern wenches carousing with lecherous men, please. <laughs> Lovely. Non-speaking tavern wenches carousing with lecherous men. Take one. Camera. Speed and action. We have entered the inner circle of hell. Can't we spice this up a bit? Stop them. Start again, Mike. Up to Vincent's entrance, Mike. No. Sorry, Mike. No. Mike. No. What's the problem, Mike? No. 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 You haven't gone nutty, have you? Let's talk, Tony. I can't do this scene. It's too much. Are you feeling all right? I'll see you tomorrow, Mike. We've、You'll、got think to think of something. What's going on, Tony? Mike's、uh, not feeling well, but don't worry. I've got a plan. I directed the scene. Nice flash of leg and the odd boob, but nothing nasty. I made a smashing job of it. And the next morning, Mike came back, and it all blew over. But Vinny was upset again, brooding. Mike got under his skin. That's how the shoot progressed. Every time Vinny picked himself up, Mike knocked him down again. We filmed witch ducking and drowning. We filmed scenes with soldiers. I think I got him, sir. We filmed long, intense riding sequences through the countryside. We're actually making an English western here, Ian, aren't we? We filmed through. Oh, Richard, I can't tell you what they've done to the church. Chills. <coughs> Villagers. A bloody dog. And we filmed Vincent Price. Vincent. Stop moving your face, please. And Vincent Price. Your voice is too sing-song, Vincent. Vincent Price. Stop smiling, Vincent. You look like the Pope on a pogo stick. And Vincent Price. Keep your hands still. And Vinny took it all, but he was breaking up inside. 
He didn't think he had anything left to lose. Life, any? Oh, good night. Uh, are you off to the pub? Oh, no, I'm going to go and see the rushes. Coming? I never watch dailies. Oh, aren't you curious to see how the film's looking? I, I know that I'm dreadful in it. Then perhaps you should come. By what logic? To prepare yourself for the worst. Ah. Huh. I could, I suppose. I'll take you in the back way. No one has to know you're there. Ah. Huh. I'm thinking maybe of hiding behind the seats. Just watch. It's not as bad as you think. Who is that up on the screen? It's you. Who? Vincent Price. That's not Vincent Price. That man on the screen is Matthew Hopkins. That man on the screen is the Witchfinder. Everyone is buzzing about it. Michael got this out of me. It was a surprise. I couldn't believe it. The film looked terrific. Acting great, suspense amazing, chilling but true. This was the film I believed in. Problem was, it was art. Art doesn't make money. I had a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach waiting for the call. We've, um, we've been looking at the rushes, Tony. This is most unexpected. Before we start. Tony, Tony, Tony. This film... Mike still has the last scenes to shoot. It's going to be the best British picture of the year. Sorry? The best British movie of the year. <laughs> no argument. Of the decade. Oh, he is the genius you said he was. He is, yes. Oh, we're excited. This, this is the beginning, Tony. What did I tell you? <sighs> we're excited too, I can promise you that. Vinny must have felt like he'd been delivered back from the jaws of oblivion. Ah, uh, please, I caught you, Mike. Uh, may I buy you a drink? No, I'm just going. I saw some of the dailies. Yeah? I see what you've been doing to me. We haven't finished yet. I understand now. You've got a performance that There's I... nothing to understand. You're an actor, I'm a director. We're making a film. All my life, Mike, I've had but one real ability. My ability to make friends. I hope that we can be friends. Tomorrow is our last day. Orford Castle, we have 35 set-ups in one short night. It's going to be tough. Sure, but See I... you on set. See you on set. God damn you. His olive branch was thrown back in his face. After that, Vinny stopped caring. Enough flaming torches for you, Mike. Our last night of the shoot. Orford Castle. Spooky place. Perfect for the bloody finale of our little film. Where's Vincent? Vinny was flying to the U.S. early next morning, due to appear in a musical on Broadway. We had to get everything done that night. He's drunk. I've just seen Vinny, and he's drunk. Oh, dear. How could he do this to me? On the last night, I'll kill him. Ah, this whole smells of wet dog. Let's get this godforsaken night over. Mm. Coffee, Philip, and get him out of my sight. This way, Vinny. Ah, oh, where are you taking me, young man? <laughs> Ian. Uh, yes, Mike? The end of this scene, you kill the witch finder. Uh, a bit full on for a hero, but I, I see what you're doing. Darkness and violence blacken souls. Like all your films. Use the axe. Really lay into him, frenzy. Succumb to the darkness utterly. Give it all you've got. Kill him. Is this because he's drunk? It's got to be totally realistic. Don't hold back. Cross the line, Ian. Are you okay? Don't worry about me. I can't do that to him. Do what you can. Philip, I need to speak with you. The axe is rubber, Philip. Come.
Calm down. Mike wants realism. Really, real realism. <sighs> really. Oh, I see. Uh, where is this foam padding, then? You're tied to a table. Yes. Your boyfriend is chained to the wall. Yes. Who knows what the witch finder is going to do to you? Mm -hmm. Your hero boyfriend breaks free. Yes. He starts to lay into the witch finder. Yes. Your boyfriend is using the axe. He's gone mad with violence. Yes. The other soldiers come in. They're horrified. He's gone mad with violence. So they shoot the witch finder. Put him out of his misery. And then Eon will shout the last line of the film. Okay. And that line sends you mad. Mad. Because it is profoundly disturbing. What is the line? An insanely violent, guttural denial of all that's good in the world. He's succumbed to ravenous hatred. It's quite dark, isn't it, Mike? And after Ian does his guttural thing... What do I do? Scream. And scream from the bottom of your soul. Okay. Come on! What's a guy gotta do to get hacked to death around here? Let's shoot it now. Took the critics a while to catch on, but audiences loved it. We were a hit. Vinny didn't see the movie for some weeks. Then he caught it in New York. It's a wonderfully suspenseful and intelligent picture, Tony. So rare these days. Transcendent filmmaking. What did you think of your performance? Well, blown away. I feel like a new man. Good old Michael, eh? Yeah. I know we weren't friends on the shoot, but the boy has a magnificent future. He was right, and I was wrong. We were all right, Vinny. No, I can be a mule sometimes. Michael showed me that, and I feel better for it. The old energy is back. My prospects have turned. It feels good to be alive. And, and can I tell you something, Tony? Of course you can. If he'd have me, I'd work with Michael again almost immediately. Oh, funny you should say that. Funny things happen on films. Good film units are like good families. No matter how many arguments and troubles you go through, you stay together. Glued there by the love of what you do, how you all fit together, and who you are. Yeah, Mike and Vinny clashed... <laughs> But the sparks were magical. We all felt it. That was our little miracle. A brilliant British film. The following year, Mike and Vinnie planned to work together again, a picture called The Oblong Box. They knew what to expect. They knew they were good together. The Oblong Box went ahead with Vinnie as the lead, but Mike was dropped as director. He'd been ill. Mike suffered from depression. He always had. It was part of who he was. His doc gave him drugs for it. Too many drugs. Mike struggled. And then one long night, when Mike was still only 25 years old, it was in his flat in Chelsea. An accident, no doubt about that. He took a few too many of those drugs. And we lost one of our greatest film directors. A lot of people... Cried their eyes out when they heard. I was one of them. If he'd lived, some say Mike would have been a British Spielberg, making popular films with real flair. I think he would have been his own man. He already was. The Witchfinder changed Vinnie's life. Did a lot for me, too. I'm just a businessman, and I always said that I'd rather be ashamed of a film that made money than proud of a film that didn't. But with the Witchfinder General, I had the best of both worlds, and something bigger. It was beautiful, just beautiful. <laughs> a great film is forever. There it is, as promised, a billboard on the Haymarket. It's a nice poster, Tony. I've got a good feeling about this picture. It's an honest film with a message of anti-violence. Do you think audiences will get that? Yes. 
there are images they'll remember for a long time. It's healthy to tell stories about the darkness that lurks inside us. Yeah. And nobody who sees the ending will forget it. Vinny is great in it. Yes. He is. <laughs> Vinny is brilliant in it. <laughs> In Vincent Price and the Horror of the English Blood Beast. Tony Tenser was played by Kenneth Cranham. Vincent Price by Nicholas Grace. And Michael Reeves by Blake Ritson. Ian Ogilvy was played by Gareth Pierce. Hilary Dwyer by Phoebe Waller Bridge. And Philip Wadilove by Richard Nichols. Other parts were played by Lynn Seymour, Simon Lutters, and members of the company. The play was written by Matthew Broughton and is a BBC Cymru Wales production, directed by Sam Hoyle. Ha 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 ha.